chicken going to be in the way? Because I could use a table saw. No. Yeah. Might, might want to reposition her. Yeah. You might want to be. Audio's, the audio is live now. You might want to be where Frick normally was. Don't make fun of me. The audio is live right now. No video yet, though. Uh, Do you say we are live? The audio is live right now. If anybody can hear me, uh, just say something in the chat. Are going to be able to get at the chop saw? Yeah. Why not? Hmm? How do I see this? Tighten somehow. Quick, how do you tighten this? What? How do you tighten this? Is that clock good or not? Yeah, we're live. We should be live now. Well, are, is it technically nine o'clock? Yeah. It's nine now. Second, I'm just posting to Facebook. Are you going to leave the AC on, Jake? Mic check. Check, check, check. Hello, hello. Yeah, that's good. Test, test, test. Megan is in. Is Jake wearing? No. We no mic? We don't have it yet. Remember? Oh. Still on. Fast mic. What do you think? You know what? You don't need this on the floor to step on. Oh. <laughs> I asked him in the first part of our conversation, so he probably forgot it by the time I think we the camera just turned off, Jake. We hung up. Are you not wearing your gear? I can't with this. Too much moving. Off the end. <coughs> I'm ready. All right, Frick, you ready? Yeah, we're good. And we're live. Video is on. Video's up. Hi, folks. Welcome to YouTube Live Workshop number nine, correct? Yep. Number nine. This one's going to be on making a mallet. Got some other housekeeping things to take care of first, but let me introduce this in case some of you don't want to stay. So this is our mallet. I've been making these probably for the last 10 years, maybe longer. Uh, these are new ones. Sean Mahaffey, a friend of mine. Is this considered a carver style? Well, yes, they would call it that. I really like it, and I like it for several reasons. I'm going to explain. A friend of mine, Sean, Mah Sean Mahaffey, now does the resin impregnation for us. So this piece of maple is cooked dry. you want to show them that, like, what it comes Cooked dry. Like? I will when we get over there. It's too far away. Cooked dry. Sorry, I turned my phone off. And then... Uh, he puts it in a vacuum chamber, pulls all the air out, replaces it with some form of a resin. So it increases the weight by probably 50% or more and makes it really hard and very stable. So it's a great, uh, it's great to start with. We were using at one point Babinga, but that's apparently some of Babinga species have now been put on the CITES list, which is going to make it difficult to move it across borders. This is a better material anyway, and heavier for us for this heavier without being larger. The handle is shaped, turned on the lathe here. We'll do that tonight, and then taped like a hockey stick. Why? Well, because the older you get, the harder it is to get a good grip, and this is extremely comfortable. What's funny is somebody did a review of mallets recently, one of the woodworking magazines, and they took ours and they liked it, but didn't like the tape. So they took the tape off, and then they liked it better. Duh. That's our trademark. So we're going to go through the process and make it, but we're going to make it out of this. Sean also sent me this. This is a piece of Purple Heart, and it fits in with our mission, which is to uh, bring peace and joy to those that have suffered as a result of their military service. So we're going to do one, and I'll possibly be able to do a second one, but we won't do that tonight. 
and then after we build it, we're going to auction it off. And I should say that uh, Charlie Ray, Charlie is a good friend of ours. He was actually here at our last workshop. Charlie is a Vietnam vet. He has three Purple Hearts, still works uh, in the military capacity. And right about now, he's flying over at uh, 35,000 feet. But he knew he was going to be doing that, so he put in his first bid. So the bid is already at $250. Thank you, Charlie. Okay, a little bit of housekeeping first. I want a special uh, shout out. Can you bring to, it over? What? Can I, yeah. To Angie. And if you don't know who Angie is, if you're new to this, Ken Anthony works here now with us. Ken's great. He's uh, dedicated and loves to be here. And this is his um, cousin who has been bedridden for a very long time. But Angie has, uh, has wanted to help, wanted to participate somehow. So she recently started doing, when we get our Purple Heart t-shirts, they come in bulk and they have to be individually folded and, and packaged and a size thing put on. So now that's what Angie does. So when you get your Purple Heart t-shirt, it'll be in a package. There'll be a little sticker on there with an A in it. That's Angie. And the size will be on there. So what do we want you to know? What do we want? Or why are we telling you about this? Because you see our Purple Heart logo. It's a conversation starter. Let me tell you this. The only way that we have consistently found the combat wounded vets that need what we do the most is through word of mouth. I talk to people everywhere I go. I have a five foot rule. Get within five feet, you're going to hear the story. And sooner or later, somebody will say, you know what? I got a nephew, a brother, a cousin, a brother-in-law. Haven't seen him in a year because they isolate themselves at home. They suffer severely from PTSD as a result of multiple tours somewhere overseas. So um, that's the best way to find the guys who need it the most, guys and gals, either one. So when you wear this t-shirt, somebody's going to ask you, that's kind of a cool logo, what's that all about? And this is your opportunity. The more people that we tell, the more people we find, the more people we help. And if you don't think this helps, get a chance to somehow correspond with some of the people that you'll meet on, on this forum tonight and let them tell you firsthand. We see miracles occur in as simple as five days. On the back, it gives the reason wood is good. So... Uh, anybody that buys a t-shirt tonight, we will give you a shout out as a little token of our thanks. Megan will get it in the mail to you tomorrow. It'll all be neatly folded by Angie. Done to perfection. Thank you, Angie. Okay, that. Put my picture back up. Donations. Now, what, what Jake? Donations. Donations. Um, I don't know if everyone realizes this or not, but the men and women who have served in the armed forces... Uh, do it out of a sense of uh, uh, patriotism, sense of duty, whatever it is, they have sacrificed, in some cases, their lives, and in other cases, their uh, peace of mind for the rest of their life. So we started this program three years ago, three and a half years ago. I met Jesse Paratus over online. Jesse is a uh, combat wounded veteran, a Marine. But he happened to tell me in, in the course of our conversation, our email conversation, that ever since he got involved in hand tool woodworking, it was the first time he'd found any peace from the physical and the mental pain he suffers from. Now, I have no military background. I do have a, a, a third cousin. His name is, um, just left me, Duplissy, Derek Duplissy, who served both in the Canadian military and in the U.S. And while serving in Iraq, had a suicide bomber detonate herself shortly, or just in front of him. And he's, uh, he was uh, severely wounded, and he has recovered uh, tremendously, but again, scars that we all carry to the grave. Anyway, hearing this from Jesse struck a chord, because I had been teaching my typical customer, or student, was a 50-year-old business executive who'd show up Monday morning stressed out, tight as a drum, would be answering calls on the BlackBerry con consistent, constantly all day long, Come Wednesday, they'd leave the thing at the hotel, and by Friday, they'd stop shaving, they let their hair down, and they just were in peace. In fact, I'd be kicking them out Friday night at midnight, telling them you got to go home. And we used to do classes from quarter to seven in the morning until 11 o'clock at night. We kept those hours up, but now we, we do this for combat wounded veterans. So starting in 2011, pardon me, <laughs> starting in 2020, we're going to start doing, and Luther's going to shoot me because he hasn't okayed this, but I'm going to override him. We're going to start doing six classes a year. We're going to do one a month, starting in the good travel months. Can't, you can't travel 
reliably in mid mid October. Yeah, mid mid October we're going to do it, and we're going to increase it to six days. We're going to go Monday to Saturday. That way we can reintroduce a project. I'll show you this real quick. Uh, I liked it when we tried to do this before, but we never had quite enough time for uh, the majority of the class to get finished. So starting, no, yeah, well we can. There's some of the eager beavers will. So this is a, a candle box. All the parts are dimensioned by hand. They start from rough, and they can do whatever they want on the lid. Uh, half blinds or through dovetails. If they're going to do the sliding lid, it has to be half blinds, so you can cut a groove in there. But it's going to be a cool little box to be able to take home. So, so that's next year. I need, and we're going to reduce the class size from 14 to 12. It's a little tight there. But I need uh, six civilians to take the class every time we host and bring in six combat wounded veterans. Now, when we do combat wounded veterans, we cover their airfare, their hotel, their meals, and we send each guy home with, it used to be 2000 we're gonna up that. In US dollars, it'll be closer to twenty five, twenty six hundred dollars in tools. I wanna give them a few more that we hadn't been able to. So it's a big financial commitment. Who cares, still need money? What's money? Promissory note for service rendered. Don't have enough money, go do more service. But, of course, we need it in order to take care of these guys properly. Uh, we've never come up short, and I don't ever expect to because the generosity of people that we're surrounded by. I'd love to say their name, but it wouldn't be fair without having their permission. But a lot of our former students, when they spend a week with these guys, they get really generous and they want to help. So if you want to donate, if you want to participate, uh, rather than do it through this channel, YouTube, because they take a huge portion... We have dedicated a section on our website, robcosman.com, top left-hand corner, Purple Heart Project, and uh, you drop down there and say, how can I help? And there's various levels of donation from, what's the smallest one, Jake? Ten dollars? Mm -hmm. Ten right up to uh, 3000 which is taking care of 3500 I don't know what it is, takes care of all the expenses for one of the soldiers. Actually, they're going to back up to 3500 because he added tools. So, we'll, uh, we'll shout out... And, and please don't, please allow us to shout it out because when others see people doing it, that's what motivates some people to step up to the plate as well. Uh, ask your questions. I'll try to answer as many as we can. Frick, is there anything I need to talk to? If you're one of the combat wounded vets that have been to one of our classes, any one of our 11 classes, would you please make sure you type that in so we can give a shout out to you in particular? I go, out, I go back and read them the, the next day and I see several times vets that we've had rob white comes to mind but these guys didn't recognize the name or i would have so make sure you say i was in class and give the date and then uh, i can say hello to you okay anything else yes megan so um jim from houston bought. jim or jen jim jim from houston and then philip from cardova philip from cardova Bought, they both bought t-shirts. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate it. Wear it proudly. Okay. We have a couple of people from the class. Matthew Renault is here. He was in the class. Shoot, I lost the chat. Matt was uh, just 10 or 11. Class 19-2, he said. I don't know uh, yeah, 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 right. <laughs> I should remember. Matt, uh, Matt is a lieutenant commander. Did I get that right? In the Canadian and the Canadian forces who is just be transferring from local to up in Ontario. So I had a couple of guys come down from Gatestown, Matt. We had some really good, actually, if you email me, I'll tell you, some great, great, great success. We have some regulars in here. Ahmed is here. Sue B is here. Ahmed's Sup always here. Super Ahmed Dave. stays there. Super Dave is here. Huh? Huh? Brett Su oh, whoa, 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 hold on, hold on. Dave Fearley's here. Our very own Super Dave Benson, uh, Super Dave Benson managed to cut himself on a saw stop. Nobody else has been able to do this because it would trip it. While assembling his saw, <laughs> he sliced his finger open on the manual. He says it's very sharp. So a forewarning to all of those of you thinking of buying a saw stop. Take it from Dave. What was he doing reading an owner's manual? <laughs> yeah. What was he doing reading? Anyway, I thought he knew everything. Why would he need to read? He was looking for pictures. He was. He's got his saw stop, and soon he'll have his bandsaw and his joiner. Promise, Dave. Okay, can I go to work? Uh, yep. Sue has increased the bid, though. It's at two seventy-five already. Is that Sue from Florida? Uh, Sue B. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Sue. And make a good David one just donated a hundred dollars. David. 
David, thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, so I'm going to turn the uh, dust collector on. I'm going to leave it on for a bit, so hopefully it, it's not overly noisy. So first thing I want to, so here's my hunk of, uh, now I prefer, we didn't talk much about the design. Uh, the head diameter is approximately three inches. Actually, it's two and three quarters. So we're, if we're starting off with three inch stock, three by three, which is what that is, we're going to get somewhere around two and three quarter. But what I like about this, you notice a little bit of tape run there, because there is an arc when you're swinging. So if that's tapered, and if it's the right taper, you're going to be hitting square on. Now, people ask, well, what about the hammer type mallets? Don't like them at all. What I like about this, now that one's brand new. I want to hit that and mark it up, so I'll use mine. What I like about this is you can strike it anywhere, and it doesn't seem to, it not, doesn't need to be directional. So you don't even have to be looking at it. If you use a hammer type, and you strike it and you're a little off center, that's gonna blow, that's gonna off to the side. This doesn't, so I like it. Feels great in hand, I don't have to squeeze that tight. If you're doing dovetails all day long, your hands get fatigued. I just, the nice thing about the wrap is you just kinda have to choke it up here because the shape of the handle is narrow, then it's got a bump in the middle, then it's narrow, we'll do more of that over the lathe. But it's just really easy to grip. So, I like this, and throw it around. We'll talk a little more about the construction as we get into it. And it hits your IBC chisels very nicely. All right, so we got to take this over and get a, a four inch piece. Verify that. I make well, this stuff. I go less. Huh? If you go less, you can get more handles. Well, more we now. can go a little bit less, and we could possibly get three out of this. The oh, first David, thing, David Ducharme was the one that donated. Is what? Oh, David. David Thank you, David. David donates all the time. David was in our class. One of our last classes up in Ontario. Yeah. Also a vet. Also a vet, yes, that's right too. And he's, uh, you can see his interview on YouTube. Now, I just want to take a very light... Well, yeah, I wanted to make sure that there was no, uh, there's no checks and there isn't. So now, if we go, well, I'll, I'll go for two and then possibly get that third one. Well, why not just go like three and seven, eight? Actually, I'm just going to do one right now because we've got to get on with this. I know, but cut it at three and seven, eight. You know what? I can't see. Make a mark on here. Now, I'm going to use a lot of equipment that you might not have access to, and that's, I feel for you, but what, what can I do? So what we need to do is square up, Jake, where is my six inch square? I'm going to use my, my disc sander, which is a general, I love this. Thanks to Roger for getting the electrics figured out on it. He kept throwing the breaker on us. This is a uh, 120 grit. So the first thing I need to do is I need to get two, two surfaces that are flat and square. And I'll find two that are closest to each other. None of them are because this is dried kind of oblong. Actually, I should probably scrape some of that wax off. Now, if you're wondering why there's wax on there, when you're dealing with dense exotic woods, uh, you don't want them drying too fast because they will crack. The denser they are, the more likely they are to crack. So they coat them with a paste. And yes, I'm using my square. <clears throat> Shout out the questions if you have them. I Now I'm doing this just so I don't clog up. So I need to get this. By the way, if you're using a disc sander, it's spinning that way. So I have to be prepared for that force when I put this on here. 
So you don't want to go in this way and have it spin around like that. So I purposely kind of come in this way and then and then uh, just I'm fighting that resistance. I'm not pushing real hard either. Now I just want to get uh, I want to get a 90 degree reference so that when I square up this end, see you've got to you've got to finish that end before you turn assemble it because you can't go in there very conveniently after the fact. You're also going to see what happens to Purple Heart, so don't judge this by the color it's going to become right away. You'll eventually get back to that lovely purple. But not without first going brown. And it has a real tendency to burn, so I'll be lucky if I can get through the end grain without burning it bad. And thanks to Jake from Minnesota for this nozzle, the most powerful one I've ever had. I meant to tell him about that. Okay, now, this is so I'm gonna, I've got flat face down, square edge in, and I'm gonna just use that How could that be that far out? It is. Check this side. I'm not pushing very hard because I don't want to burn it. I'm to about here, so I got another to go. Don't worry about the other end, that'll get taken care of after we've turned the mallet. Louder, can't hear you. He can't, he can't yell. I'm going to turn my mic. Sean Mahaffey. Huh? They want to know when you got the piece of Purple Heart. Didn't uh, Sean send it to us? Sean Mahaffey, who's been a long, probably one of the longest um, members in our online workshop, sent it to me for this very purpose. By the way, just be a quick side note. If you're not part of our online workshop, we're in the middle of building this standing desk. I'm getting really excited about this. This is, we get into it, it's so fun. So this is our base. And if those of you who are members wondering where last night's episode is, it'll be up tonight. We got 10 minutes left to film. But we've, uh, we, the prototype is over there. That's what Frick uses when he's, when we're doing these live broadcasts. This is the finished one. It's a cherry with that white is holly for accents on the through wedge tenons. And now we're just doing a very unique way of building the interior drawer boxes. So you hadn't, it looks interesting. Join us. You do that at uh, Rob. Robsworkshop.com. All right, let's go over here. We've got to, I can actually shut that air off for a bit. Philip Lawrence has increased the bid to 300. Pardon? Philip Lawrence has increased the bid to 300. Thank you, Philip. Can you get over here, Jake? Yeah. I got to go a little slower tonight because normally we stay in one place, but tonight we're moving all around, so. Why are you doing that? Robert Cunningham from Woodbridge donated $100. Thank you, Robert. And Rick bought a t-shirt. Rick from Florida? No, Mount Bridges, Ontario. From Ontario? Yeah. Thank you, Rick. Happy Canada Day to all Canadians and happy Independence Day. Yes. Are you going to mention that? You're a little early, but well, <coughs> it's we, coming. We I got to find my center. Stay there, Jake. I'll come back over. Now this should be centered anyway because we use this jig. And if you're if you're wondering, Jake mentioned it. So this is what we get. Well, this isn't quite what we get. Sort of, kind of what we get from uh, Sean. 
he sends us these blocks. Then we square up the two sides, and then Dan, who works for us now, Dan drills them. And that's what all of this, uh, these styrofoam packs are. So we go through a lot of them. So if you don't, and you probably wouldn't have a jig already set up, just go in corner to corner. Can't see it at all. Well, that's what you would do. You'd go corner to corner, and that's going to give you your center mark. I'm just going to have a look at this and guess. Now, I put my good side down here because I want this to remain square to the drill. How about some power? Remember my request? Um, he took you the power. You got to take it over here. I'll get it up here. Quick question. If what? If, uh, if you live in the U.S., can you buy a Wood River plane from Woodcraft and get it cosmonized? You can. Now, mind you, it's a little on the expensive side because you have shipping in both directions. That's What's not what it? You do. Huh? That's not what we encourage them to do. Oh, well, okay. So let me give you two options. You can ship it up to us. We'll do it and bill you the, the fee plus the uh, shipping back. Or we can send you a blade and chip breaker set that uh, has already been prepared. That leaves you to do the rest of it on your own. Your call. All right, now I'm just going to... Uh... Yeah, that's not on center. Why is that thing so noisy? Okay, so we want to move that. I want to get as much of it. I want this to be as large as possible. So I need to move. Yeah, I need to move back. Am I on the right line that way? Yeah. No. So I need to move. There, Jake. Push up. No, just push it in. No, check it. That's pretty close. That, that needs to be adjusted. That one's way off. So we need to come over this way. Again. No, you can't do that. Why? Because it's just that way. Mm -hmm. The other one was just being forced back into that other hole. You mean it was moving? Yeah. back. Would have been smarter to get a red pen that I could actually see. Red didn't, you couldn't see the red. Huh? I thought it was a red you couldn't see. Yeah. I need a black pen. I need a felt tip, actually. That stuff is so hard to mark on. Has anybody got a felt tip? Should be one in the cupboard by the shirt. No, I took it. It's all right. I'm going to get a piece of tape. I'll put a piece of tape on there. While you're looking, Matthew bought a T-shirt. Thank you, Matthew. Ma where's Matthew from? Um, Pawtucket. Where? Rhode Island. Pawtucket? Yeah, I'm, not sh I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. <laughs> and then uh, Toby from Mount Juliet is also bought a t-shirt. Thank you, Toby. We go through a ton of masking tape. It's the best alternative for putting lines on something you can't otherwise That's see. Tape. What? For that hole. Well, I know it seems to be, but I don't think you're reading it right. Just check this one more time, make sure it's in the right spot. Yeah, okay. it is. It is. Okay. So my two sides reference again. This is just a big block of wood, by the way. We cut a 
spot out of so that we can line this up. Okay, let me see it moved over. Come on. That bit need to be sh oh, there's that tray. And this way. So why I'm turning the drill is because if you look, the two lips come to a point, but you gotta see them square on in order to spot that. Now, I'm gonna put a clamp on here so that that uh, drill bit will start because we've already got a couple of holes in there and I don't want that to wander off to one side. I'm going to have my vacuum here. Sometimes this thing will squeal, and if it does, you'll know. you got to empty out the flute. You can't just keep going. And it's a short drill, and the, the flute stops short of going all the way to the top, so there's no way for that stuff to go, or no place for it to go. Now I actually forgot to do something. I have a, we usually end up drilling deeper than what we have the capacity with the drill. So I have this little block that I put underneath here. So that I can drill all the way through. There. Okay, so that actually is pretty good. As far as being right on. All right, let's, now, before we go, uh, we'll set that aside. Now what we've got to do is we've got to go make a handle. So here's, here's uh, the handle that I like. So you've got this bump in the middle that fits nicely into your palm. By the way, the blank, I think, is 10 inches long. And we use five quarters, we use inch and a quarter stock. So that is 10 inches. The widest part of this is just under inch and a quarter. So if I can get inch and a quarter square, I'll be good. Now, I picked out two different woods you can use. I always, when it comes to something like this, which is going to take a lot of abuse, you think, well, what's the best wood? Well, if you think about a baseball bat, baseball bats are made out of ash. Some of the newer ones are made out of maple. So I don't have any ash thick enough. I've got some red oak, which actually would work. But I'm going to use maple. I prefer that. So we need to go in and cut a chunk of this off at 10 inches. Give me a second. Jake, if I'm moving around too quick, tell me and I'll slow down. I just have to, uh, I've got to move this so I can cut my piece. It's got a check on one end, but I can get, I can get by it, so. Now this piece is not quite an inch and a quarter. It's inch and three sixteenths, but I can still use it. I want it three three sixteenths square, so I'll just set that like so. There's the check on that side. I don't think it. Oh my goodness, maybe it does. Son of a gun. That runs over in. I didn't. I should have turned it over. I apologize. I didn't. Another piece. Fairly straight grain, which is something I would look for. Now, if you're an experienced turner, you can take it just like that. Not a problem. If you're not, you might want to knock the corners off to make it a little bit easier to, uh, to turn. Yeah, I'm going to do it on the bandsaw rather than. Oh, what do you mean? 
Why? One of his one of his forty friends had buried him. He was forty five. Fine, I will. Now that we have, thanks to Ken, we can adjust our saw so much easier than we could before. Bring that over to 45 degrees. And this thing is, any idea what that is? The bit has been increased to 310. Thank you. Two is back on top. All that burning. Now, uh, it's, just, it's about a, a two-thirds. I actually figured this out one time, but I've since forgotten. So if that's an inch and a quarter, I'll try it at seven-eighths and see. So that flat, that flat spot is seven sixteenths. And that one up there is 5.8, so it's got to be less than that. That one is half, and that one's half. I can drop that blade down a little bit. I found the centers before I knocked off these corners just because it's easier to put the corners in place. Although I have a center finding jig that I could use on something like that as well. Now I'm going to uh, I'm going to use something pointed. Typically don't use this closest thing I had to get two center spots. Okay. I got a question. Yeah. Uh, how do you prepare the end grain on a large case piece? You always use the shooting board, but what do you do if it's a much larger than your shooting board? Read that again, please. How do you prepare the end grain on a large case piece? You always use the shooting board, but what do you do if it's much larger than your shooting board? Okay, I, I'm going to suggest, just so that we can kind of keep on this thought we're on right now, if you ask me that question at the end, okay. and I'll review it. That way I'm not, I'm not going down a different lane. All right. Okay, so I need to get... I, I, I thought about, should I sharpen everything now? Nah, I'll show them how to do it. So I'm going to use my skew chisel, and I'm going to use my... my uh, Spindle gouge, and I'm going to use my parting tool. So I don't know if I have time to do all of these, but I'll, I'll take you over and at least, at least, actually, I'm going to use probably this one exclusively. Come on over here. Bid now, is up to 325. Thanks to Philip again. Thank you, Philip. So th this is a nice luxury. I've got this nice big 16 inch, actually, I got two of them. Couldn't live with just one. 16 inch disc sander. And this is the one that we use for metals and for composites. The other one that you saw me using over there, we only use for wood. But it just so happens that the groove for the miter gauge just works perfectly. So I'm up here near the top. And then flip it over and do it on this side. And that maintains the same angle on both sides. That's good and sharp. Now, I'd go out there, but we can't get the camera out there. I've got a buffing wheel out there that I sometimes will go out and buff, but that doesn't, I don't feel any burr on there, so it should be good. So my lathe is a, uh, is a general, what is it, 260. Nice lathe made by General Canada, no longer in business. Robust, they were made for public schools. And believe it or not, I'm just going to use a center, a pointed center in here instead of a spur center. Now, if you're not familiar with lathes, typically this is the live, uh, the, this is the drive end that would have a spur center which looks like this. There's a small one, there's a large one. 
okay? And that keeps it from slipping. However, I like to be able to flip it around if I need to. So if I have, this is my live center. This is a ball bearing, a ball bearing center. The old fashioned ones were just done on friction and you have to lubricate them and they would burn and it was a bit of a pain to use. The new ones and they're real, this is a Wood River one, it's very inexpensive. It's just coming apart on me. Anyway, so that's what I prefer to use. Now I also have another tool rest, which is longer. I need to use that one. Most people change out just the tool rest. I change out the whole thing because it happened to two of these lathes. So. in there. Now it doesn't matter what end, it's looking very similar. Put that in. And I can excuse me Jake, I can put enough friction I can put enough pressure on this that I don't have to worry about it slipping. Now if I had to turn that around I, I don't worry the problem with this is these get beat up and that spur center is doesn't always give me a perfectly centered spur so that's why I like this. Call me different. Now, we want to be fairly close. My first task is to get this round. And this is all about rim speed. Rim speed simply means how fast is the outside diameter moving. If you're turning a small diameter tool, you need to have a high RPM. If you're turning a large bowl, you want a low RPM because it's all about rim speed. How fast is the wood moving past the tool? That's probably most apparent. Uh, this is a little bit off topic, but you always hear about these birds getting killed by uh, wind generators. And yet you watch the things turning and they turn at what, like maximum 20, 30 RPM? 15 RPM. And you think, how could a bird be so dumb as to get hit by that? But when you find out what the rim speed, meaning what speed is the tip of that blade moving through the air, how much was it? I think it's like 250 kilometers. Yeah, over 300 kilometers an hour is how fast that thing's moving. Now I understand why the birds get hit. All right, so I'm gonna use a, a one inch skew chisel. I love this tool because it's so clean. But what I need to do is I need to rest the flat part on there, that's what guides it. And then you slowly rotate and tip until you pick up a shaving but that flat bevel is what controls the penetration so it doesn't dig in on you. Now I purposely don't. You, I'm cutting with the bottom half. There are times when I'll use the top. Now Richard Raffin taught me, relax. If you've got a death grip on here, just like cutting dovetails, you can't feel what's occurring. So, And a nice sharp skew will give you almost a finished cut. In this case, we don't do any sanding. Now I just run the tool over like that and I can tell if there's still a flat spot without me having to turn the machine off to verify that. Okay, that feels good. I must add, I, uh, I had the opportunity to be an assistant, teaching assistant to Dale Nish for three of the four years I was at BYU. The other year I was his his uh, lab assistant. So I've had the opportunity to learn from some of the best turners in the world. Richard Raffin, um, Ray Key, Al Sturt, uh, Ed Malthrop, Rudy Osonic. I'm looking for a pencil or a pen. So there's my, there's my, uh, my what? This is my template for my handle. So this is the tip part that's going to go inside the mallet head. So I'm going to have a flat shoulder right here. This is going to be the highest point. A high, uh, pardon me, a low point. High point. Low point. And then the high point at the end. And then it tapers off to a point. We'll actually finish that on the belt, on the disc sander. So the first thing I'll do is come in here and end this. So this is my parting tool. This is a uh, made by um, Sorby. So it's a diamond shape. It's wide here and then tapers off to both ends so that when you're cutting into the wood, you don't have all that drag if this is the same diameter. 
your, your, your maximum point is right there where the cutting takes place, so you have lots of relief underneath. So I'll come in here and just bring this down to a uh, safe diameter, probably three eighths of an inch. Now, I need a pair of calipers. So I'm going to use, where's that other, um, where's that other mallet handle? Did I leave that mallet handle over there? Give me a second. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so I need to have this dimension. I need to have, and this, these two dimensions are the same. I don't worry about these two because they're going to be essentially what that major diameter is anyway. So I need a couple more pair of these. So that's my smallest diameter. So what I'll do is come in here. That's high. Oh, that's high. This is low. So right in here. This is a low point. Okay, now, this one has to be right because this one is the one that fits inside the mallet head. That's the wrong size. I'm glad I didn't do it. This is supposed to be three quarter. And I actually prefer, that's seven eighths by the way, that's the hole. So I use an open end wrench for that. I'll get it started. Nice thing about this is this needs to be precise. These are approximate. These calipers will expand a little bit. There's some flex. This isn't going to flex. work this in. The other nice thing about that, if you jam something, it'll just stop spinning. All right, I'll worry about this later. Now we're gonna get in and get this shape. So I'm gonna come in here. So this is gonna be, it's all about flow, right? You want a nice, these aren't, these are just, you know, look at nature how things curl and move. They're not perfect radiuses. It's just a nice flow. Hard to explain that. So typically you don't use a skew chisel on an inside radius, but I do. That mark right here designates, uh, how do we do this? This, one, this is just squared off, isn't it? Pointed. Yeah, it is, it goes to a point. Oh, yeah. And we finish it off over on the sander. Okay, now I'm going to shape this. And this kind of this is round and then scoops in. So this is my high point. This one comes from this high point down into the valley. This one comes from the hill. And into the valley, and we want a nice, a nice transition. I'll come back to this. Same thing over here. And then this is another high point into the valley. We want to maintain a nice 
sharp uh, shoulder right here. It'll go up nice and tight against the inside of the mallet head. Okay, now that was done. We can come in here and That vibration is going to leave less than perfect a uh, less than perfect surface. So try to get rid of that. Now, when you're turning, don't look at where the tool is meeting the wood. You look up here and watch as that that shape progresses. So you have to turn. You have to practice enough so that you know where your where your tool edge is in relation to the wood you're cutting. And that may sound a little precarious at first, but you'll get used to it. You learn to feel the wood through the tool. I just want to make somewhat of a seamless transition right there. It's going to be underneath tape, so not 100% critical. Now we'll go up and get this one. Gotta soften this bump just a little bit. Is that in the way, Jake? No. I can move it. <clears throat> Believe it or not, when I'm making these, after I get into it, I can get pretty quick with it. But, takes a little bit. I like my skew chisel because, as I said, it's, it's very efficient. It leaves a nice finish. And I actually find it easier to use. There's a lot of people are saying, why aren't you using a gouge right now to get that inside radius? Well, because I don't want to. Okay, I'm going to come up here and just finish this off a little more. And what I'm looking at is just, I want lines to flow nicely. Okay, now we gotta come up here and get this working right. What happens if you let if the if the skew chisel engages above the halfway point it'll catch on you. So I try to make sure it's always hitting below the halfway point. So this being the halfway point, I want to be cutting down here, not on the top side. Uh, where's my wrench? Okay, it's all too big. So we'll come in here, take this down. this up a little bit. Now, some may prefer to scrape. You could go in and use, use your skew chisel like that, which is a little easier to control. It doesn't give you the same surface quality, but this is going to be inside the mallet head anyway, so it doesn't matter. Now I'm being particular because I can take more off a lot harder to put it back on. What's up? Now, 
I'm gonna go in here. Wait. Wait. What? What you talking about? I need a really tight shoulder in order to come up tight. So I'm going to come in here. I could go in like this, but I'm going to use the point. And I'm going to just undercut slightly. Now when I put that on, it'll be sure to come up tight against that inside face. What's the matter, Jake? Somebody wanted to know if they could buy a regular saw. And then have and then have a limited edition handle put on it later. No. Uh, they're asking if the handles are interchangeable. Handles are not. We I handle oh, each saw individually. Might be close, but it would never be. No guarantees it would fit exactly. Now, am I dull? I'm not picking up a shaving like I should be. I prefer to have a rubber glove on. I'll show you why. So improves your grip. When it comes time to trying to fit this in, okay. yeah, too tight. <laughs> no. Why? What wasn't working too well? Oh no, I, I purposely didn't turn it on because it's noisy. Especially right here where the vent is. Yeah, okay, so that's only gonna get me that's only gonna get me close, which is what it's done. Now I've got to go in there and fit this. You know. Keep checking it. Like I said, it's easier to take more off than just to put some on. Now, you'd never be able to grab all that with your bare hand, but with the glove you can. Now, I'm going to spin it around a little bit, because what it'll do, it'll show me where it's tight. Where it's burnished. Now, that's... That's getting really close, so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to use the straight edge of the skew. Try that again. Back in here. Which is good because that tells you that it could be fairly uniform in here. Yeah, I'm close. weird is sometimes you'll go in the other way a whole lot easier. I could almost put that, I could put that together from that side. Son of a gun. But, this is my finished side. What does that mean about your fit on the other end? Or? What's weird is it was drilled with the same drill bit. I know, but what about, so well, I want it to be fit on the other end because I don't want a gap. That's what I mean. I can't tell. I can't tell until I put it together because it's that end that's got to go all the way through.
here, okay. But are not up tight. I'd like to be a little tighter than that. So, go back in. Well, I'll undercut that a little bit more. You want to clean off where it was burning? No. No, I'm just going to come in here. And that I need to leave. I'll take some of this off though. We just cut that off so I'm not worry about trimming it down. Right, now we'll put this in. Okay. Now I'm going to use thin cyanacrylate. We used to use uh, yellow glue on this, but the fit, no, the the difference between having it fit. Should what? you put it in the other end first? Nope. Mm -hmm. Nope, because this wicks. So I'm going to use the thin. That'll take a fair bit. Now somewhere, I put it over here. I got to get my other one. You know what I could have done, Jake, and I should have done, just for the, oh, sorry, for the sake of what we're doing right here, is I should have sprayed that handle with the accelerator hmm. before I put it together. Because uh, normally we don't have to do it, but I do a bunch of these. I leave them, let them dry, and then come back and do it. But we've got to finish this one tonight. Now, this is the medium cyanacrylate. There's a little bit of a gap up top. It's not bad. Okay, now let that sit for uh, not long, actually, I'm going to, what? Yes, we will. I'm just going to hit it with the accelerator and let it, hopefully it'll, it'll uh, cure all the way down. Nice thing about the thin is if your two pieces touch and are nice and tight, it'll wick right down through there. Besides, the way we put these together, it's not going to come off anyway. All right, give that a couple minutes. So what are the questions? Well, uh, someone asked if you're ever concerned, like when you're putting the wrench while it's turning there, that the wrench would get caught. And what happened? That's well, I'm asking you, are you concerned about it? Obviously in the not. Event, in the event that you had a spur in place, though. Well, see, that's a nice thing about having turning between just mm -hmm. two pointed uh, centers is that if it does get caught, it just stops. So there's no danger, but... Uh, if you Show the tool who the boss is. Hold your term firm, but gentle. They're also like quite a good husband. Yeah. What? They're also quite impressed that you kept taking it on and off while it was still spinning. Well, you if you get in, if you do a lot of this, you get to the point where you don't have time to wait for that to slow down. But having those two point turning between two point centers is so much easier for that that reason. Um, so let's go back to that guy's question that he asked that I couldn't. Can you find it? Uh, yes. Okay, while you're so doing that, Justin from Southside, Alabama, donated money. And Chad. Thank you, Justin. From Greeley, bought a shirt. Thank you. Chad or Chad. Brad? Chad. Chad. Thank you, Chad. That'll go in the mail on Monday. No, Tuesday, Tuesday, sorry. Tuesday. Monday's a holiday. Yeah, Where's the, what's that question for? How do you prepare the end grain on a large case piece? You always use the shooting board, but what do you do if it's much larger than your shooting board? How do you prepare the end grain on a large case piece? So when I teach my class and we are learning to prepare stock, all six surfaces, meaning 
face one, face two, edge one, edge two, N two, N one, N two. In other words, one, two, three, four, five, six would be the six surfaces. I always let them do one end on the shooting board, but I make them or I teach them to do the other end freehand because, as I tell them, you can't always bring the workpiece to the tool. You sometimes have to take the tool to the workpiece. So I would, I would put that in my vise, hold it securely. And then I would plane the end. You always got to cut your little chamfer on the back side so you don't have that split out on the end. And then you start the process of both squaring it to the face, meaning squaring it in this direction and squaring it that way. I prefer to square it to the face first. So if I was doing... There's a piece of maple right here. piece of pine right here. If I was doing the end of this board and it was too big for my shooting board... First thing I would do is come in with my Wood River low angle block, shameless promotion. Billy the Kid just arrived. William H. Bonnie, come on in. We got him. Oh, oh, too boring, is it? We got him. My mom finds it mes mes mesmerizing. Though. Mesmerizing. You should have seen him on the ice last night. We had. Uh, we had Billy the Kid uh, on the ice with us. Second time? First time? He skated a couple times before, but... He's, he's, a while. Let's just say he's ice skated. Yeah. Frick scored last night. So back to what we're doing. First thing I want to do is I want to get the plane so that's sitting square. So I'll go in and I will use my steel square to check that. If I have to take a little off of one side or the other, I use the plane. The fact that the blade doesn't go all the way to either side, meaning if I plane like this with this flush, that side is not going to be, that strip's not going to be touched. I'm going to take all of this side off. So if this were low and this were high, I would do it like that. If this were low and this were high, I would do it flush on this side. And that would simply take material off the high side until that came down to being square. Once that's square, as long as my blade is projecting parallel to the sole, then every pass I take is going to maintain that square edge. And now I can work on squaring this. I'd need a much larger square. And I would come in and I would measure that. And if it's perfectly square, then I don't have any more work to do. If it wasn't, if it was high here, low there, I would take a pass and I would just keep extending it a little bit farther each time. I almost get to the end, I would check it again, and at some point when I'm ready, I can go all the way and finish it, checking both this and that one. And that's how you would work the edge. Any other questions? We'll go back to turn. Uh, someone made the suggestion for a future episode that you should uh, do your drawer bottom plane. Drawer bottom. We already did that on the, uh, we did that one on the uh, online and workshop. And you can't make it in this amount of time. Yeah, and it's, yeah, it would be hard to do in, in one of these. But we'll come up with some new ideas, and you keep firing them at us. We'll we'll strike on one. Uh, All right, can we go back over and turn? Do you still recommend the Wood River five and a half as the first plane? I would never change that. Wood River five and a half. If you're an adult, if you're a person hey, that's hey. over what? They're right here. Wait, man, I'm yelling. No, you're talking to Frick. Yeah, I'm talking to Frick. Oh, yes, Frick's not asking if, the question. If uh, if I uh, if you weigh over 150 pounds, five and a half, absolutely. If you're under 150 pounds, you might consider a um, a number five, <clears throat> five and a half. What do we? We did the weights the other day for a YouTube video we just did. I couldn't believe it. The uh, traditional five and a half was under five pounds. Just over. Just over? I think it was just under, no. Jake. Low angle jack is just under. Oh, okay. So the low angle jack. This I was comparing low angle jack as a first plane to the five and a half. I like the heavier plane. Heavier plane's easier, carries through the wood. Momentum. But it's not too heavy. It's not too heavy. The uh, low angle jack was under five pounds. The original Stanley five and a half was just over five pounds, but the Wood River five and a half was just over seven pounds. That's substantial. Yes, Frick? We're going? Yep. We're okay. just, uh, Philip is still the highest bidder. I, I believe it's at uh, 325. Well, wait till we get closer to being done, then they'll really Yeah, get they want to make sure that it turns out okay. <laughs> I think, anyway. Okay, so now what do we got to do here? I'm going to actually cut that end off because I've got a little thing that I made for doing this. 
rather than, the only reason is that that stub is kind of small and you're turning a big head, yeah, not that much danger. Um, the same principle applies for turning the head as the handle, right? That they could have cut off the corners. Yes, I'm going to do that right now. <clears throat> so on the bandsaw, I'm going to cut this little, what do we call this? Nub. Nub. As in Stumpy. Stumpy is and, here. Huh? Stumpy is here. Stumpy's here? Yep. Hey, Stumpy. James. I don't know which one he wants. Thank you. Appreciate the help. He's, uh, his, the video we did, uh, he did is got a lot of eyeballs, and I'm sure it's contributed to our uh, success of our Purple Heart project. So now, rather than turn these off, I'm going to cut them off. So, uh, table saw is already actually set up, so let's go over and use that. We've got it at 45. Paul has suggested that I uh, add my maple bacon into the auction. It will increase the bid. Paul? Yeah. Paul who? Paul Morrison. Paul's on? Yep. Paul from Montreal, from Ottawa? Hey, Paul. He wants us to make That's Lieutenant fun. Commander Paul. He wants us to make more fun out of Dave. <laughs> well, it's too easy. Give us a challenge. Close enough. Mm -hmm. Question. What? Have you ever considered, or why not make and turn the mallet out of one solid piece of wood? Uh, well, because, can you imagine the cost of a piece of Purple Heart, 10 inches long by 4 inches by 4 inches? Way too expensive. 3 by 3. 3 by 3. Well, well in order to get 3 by 3, you'd be buying, you'd be buying, uh, 12 quarter wouldn't do it. 16 quarter. Okay, so now I don't have a I don't have an end there. So uh, I don't remember how we ever got into this, but what we did is we took a face plate and mounted a block of wood on it and then turned a cone. Screw that on there. And now the end goes in there. Now, I like to uh, do this a little bit different. I'm actually going to put my tool rest at the shape that I want the head. You'll see why momentarily. And I'm going to use my spindle gouge on this. So let's come over to the uh, grinder and I'll show you how we sharpen that. It takes a bit of a knack to do it. You can do this on a, on a, on a disc sander. You can do it on a belt sander. You can do it on a grinder. Are you stuck? Where's uh, Billy left? Okay, but I'm... You're coming, right? This is the... Uh, I'm using the new CBN wheels, which is kind of like an industrial diamond. Just because they're great. They don't lose their shape. And I've got to use, I'm going to remain a, I've got a flat on the bevel and I'm going to roll the tool like this. So it's a bit of a knack to, uh, to get that. Essentially all freehand. You want to try to keep the, the bottom, the bottoms at the same spot. You can tell when you've done it. You've got. You should have one bevel, not multiples. And I can feel a little bit of a burr in there, so I know I was successful. All right, Jake, you got to go around the long way. Yeah, I'll meet you over there. Yes. I'm going to turn the air on for this one. 
and I got it in my pocket. This is my, my fancy dust collector, kind of something we put together out of necessity when we first came in here and we haven't changed it. And I use a bunch of magnets to move that about. Now, um, out, of, out, of, uh, out of round, out of balance is what I meant to say. So I'm gonna slow my speed down initially. Again, it's all back to rim speed and we're turning a larger diameter now. And I'm gonna use it in a little bit of a non-traditional way, but I'm using the tool rest as a way of turning this, getting the shape I want, and to get a perfectly flat surface with a gouge, especially a small spindle gouge, is tricky. But by using the tool rest with my index finger on my left hand and my thumb holding that tool in the same spot as I slide along the face of the tool rest. Now, I can move that in a little closer. I'm looking down here in plan view just to make sure that I got the angle that I want. Now my lathe is variable speed and it's the, uh, oh is it, I can't remember whether it's DC or what, but it's, you don't have to change pulleys. So I can turn that up a little bit just by turning that dial. I'm surprised this stuff has held its purple shape and color. Even after cutting into it. Usually the purple is just on the surface and you get into it and it's a real ugly brown. Which is starting to get at the top. Notice that? Over here? Yeah, it's two separate shades. I thought that was the light. By the way, it's not a bad idea to wear a face shield, but why am I not using it? Well, it would interfere with my microphone, maybe. Now, by resting that, I can tell I'm all around here, but I got a, still a little bit of a flat spot up there, so I know I don't have to take off as much. Now, I'm moving my body like this to try to keep that tool following the tool rest without having to move my arms. Now I'm going to turn I'm going to turn it up maximum speed. Okay, that's good and round and it actually looks nice and flat. I don't think I can improve on that. Maybe, oh, wait a minute now. A little bit of a flat spot there. Dave still on there? Yep. Okay, now I'm going to use my parting tool. This stuff throws dirt so bad I am going to put this on. I want to square up this end. Actually, i got to shut this off for a second and look. Oh, it is out of, it is out of flat. So my parting tool allows me to go in there and quite effectively
shutting it off so I can go in there and see. Okay, I can, I can take care of the rest of that on the sander. Now I gotta cut my chamfers on the end. This is where I'll use the point of the stew chisel to go in and cut a nice sharp chamfer. And then one up here at the top. Remember, you got to let the flat bevel. Is there a reason you're just not putting the center of the chisel in the mat instead of using the point? You mean scraping it like that? No, no, cutting it. Cut, no, the other one, the other like that? Yeah. Well, it's easier to control with the point, at least for me. Okay. All right, that looks good. Now we're going to sand it. Final finish on it. That's actually quite smooth. In fact, I can start with 220. I like these sanding discs. They're not made for this, but they're durable. The sandpaper lasts a long time. Depending on how good of a job you did turning, you may have to start with a much coarser grit, but this one came out quite nice. There's no bad tears. And Purple Heart is typically not the nicest wood to plane, chisel, saw, or turn. Okay, that's nice and smooth. It's a mallet, remember. But it is a Purple Heart mallet, so I have to... in there and see if I can't just clean up that inside face a little bit. Okay, now remember, I'm doing this from the perspective of, uh, of production, because we got to get these things out the door. So whatever works the fastest. Now, oh shoot, I should have left that on. I'll turn on again in a minute. I'm going to go over to the bandsaw and cut that nub off. I can't say nub without thinking the stump, the stumpy. Now that's dangerous because of the tendency to want to roll. And some people would chalk a wedge under both sides, but I do this a lot. So and that blade is nice and sharp. So I can, I can get away with it, but if you're uncomfortable with that, you have to support it on both sides. Okay. Free me up. All right. Now I'm going to clean up the end. Have we been going an hour and 20 minutes? Yeah. Time flies when you're with friends and having fun. Okay, I've got two grits here. I've got a uh, 320 and I've got my uh, 120. And this stuff is notorious for burning. So I'm gonna I'm going to sand it in the same direction that the lines are running. This is tough to do. I can't lay it on here because that's not at the same angle. So I just have to I'm holding close and you just you know which way the direction that your the resistance is. It's wanting to do this, so I'm kind of pushing it up like that. I move it side to side so that I don't... You're going to get dull spots on your belt, no matter what. So to avoid having grooves, I just move it a little bit side to side. Now, what's nice is those uh, grain run, uh, marks are almost the same radius as the outside of this disc. Did you notice the... Uh the maple grain mine? Yeah, so I'm going to clean them up. Okay, now I'll go over here. I need to clean that off. Oh, you stand right there, let me walk around you. Is, uh, is Jake on? Have you seen? You haven't mentioned any vets. They mentioned it at the beginning. 
320 belts are really nice to have, very easy to abuse. That's what happens. Most people use them too aggressively and they'll burn real fast and clog up, so you got to keep them clean. Coming. Got a little bit of a spot right there. What's the price up to? This is going to be one of the nicest mallets I've made. Still 325. Okay, you turn the air off. Now, to hold that head on, I can't come over. There. Can't? Okay, well, I'll describe it. To hold that head on, I'm going to. I, I put two screws down into the. Uh, I'm going to put them. I'm going to drill a hole that, right on the joint line on both sides. Now, I don't want. I don't want to put it on here to possibly split the wood. So I'm going to do it on this side and on this side. I'm going to put it right down there. Oh, you know, I got to turn the heater on. Probably not going to get uh, hot enough before we have to go. My branding iron. Remind me I turned that on, would you please? Mm -hmm. Always afraid I'm going to leave the shop some night with that on. You can do this freehand, but again, we do it a lot, so to eliminate error. So I just had a little jig, a hole in the middle. I didn't want to sit there and turn that by hand. I'm going to use a, an inch and three quarter by number eight screw. want to make sure that the screw head goes below the surface so that when you set this on your bench you don't uh, oh the stink of that sign actually you don't leave a mark I just got to get this uh, purple heart out of the flutes Got a little spot in here I want to get rid of. Keep that clean. Now I need my drill, my driver. You want the bidding update? Yeah. So uh, Sue bid three thirty-five. Then Philip bid, Philip and Keith bid three fifty, uh, and then Jim Hodge bill bid four fifty. Whoa! And then we're Phillip, getting there. Philip is brought it back up to four seventy-five. So that's the current. Edda boy, Philip. Okay, and then there's some shirts. So Bruce from St. Louis don't bought a shirt. Thank you, Bruce. Um, Justin from Polalup. Thank you, Justin. Bought a shirt. And James 
donated $50 from Templeton. Thank you, James. And I'm sorry, my phone's loading. Okay. So by putting this screw, these two screws, half the thread is going to be in the purple heart, half the thread is going to be in the maple handle. So there's no way that head can come off without pulling those screws out through. And it's just, especially with two of them, it's not going to happen. So you, you may have just answered the question, but we had two questions about that. And one of them was, why do you hold the head on with the screws instead of a wedge? That's why. Uh, and uh, Ahmed said, would a wood spline work better? Nope. Well, I mean, there's, there's probably, I'm sure there's other ways of doing this, but Ahmed, production. And we want it to be secure. So now we're going to do, we're going to take care of the end. So this is a little jig I built for holding, uh, for finishing off the handle. So one of the problems with turning is you've always, you've always got the ends where the, the uh, centers were and you got to do something with them. You don't want to see the points. So I came up with this little jig that allows me to put a little cone shape on the end. You'll see it as it happens. It stops it. The shoulder here stops it. Okay, so there's our end. Now, um, I would normally at this point burn my uh, my logo in there, but I can't right now because it's not hot enough and it's going to have to get really hot in order to burn this. But that's alright, I can burn it after I put the finish on it. Lay that down. And the finish we use dries really quickly, so I should be able to do this and finish it up here in the next five minutes. Um, I'll bring it down there, Jake. Hold on. I use deft I'm going to promote this stuff. I don't sell it, but I think it's the best finish for small projects. Love this product. So I've talked about it before. It's deft clear finish. This is semi-gloss. It just lays on there like velvet. Oh, gorgeous stuff. Dry in time between coats. It could be measured almost in seconds. So Keith bid $500. Pardon? Keith bid $500. Thank you, Keith. And then Philip raised it to $525. And then Jim Hodge. Has oh, what, what you wait? It's going to light up here in a second. Jim, Jim Hodge is the current uh, highest bidder at $550. And um, Brian from Chatsworth, Ontario, bought a t shirt and he said it was nice meeting you in Toronto. Brian, Brian said what? Brian. But he bought a t shirt? Yeah. He Thanks, said Brian. So nice it was nice meeting you in Toronto. Toronto. Nice meeting you. We'll be back. We have a wood show win, Jake. There's three wood shows in Ontario this year. First one's the end of September in Woodstock. There's a brand new one that's going to be, I think, middle of November. And that one is in Ancaster. And then uh, the big Toronto one, the end of February. So, if you make it, not great to see you. All right, so this is all going to be taped. So all I need to do is finish off the end down here. Absolutely love this stuff. That top is almost dry. That won't take very long. Hold it. Okay. Hold it. Oh, what? Center, right? uh, no, I wonder if I can blow air on it and dry it faster. What is the brand of that uh, nozzle? Someone asked that. Here, Jake. OSHA compliant. Are you kidding me? It is? Yeah, it's called Typhoon. Typhoon. It's um, coil hose pneumatics. Typhoon is the brand. And it says OSHA compliant, which I have a hard time believing. That thing's got so much power. And you know, I just noticed the other day that there's no center hole. Can you focus on that? 
it's got all those little holes around the outside. My goodness, does it blow. Dry. You gonna go through three? Don't need to, I usually just do two. That's enough. Remember, it's a mallet. Yeah, but this isn't just a mallet. I doubt this will ever strike wood. It's just sure it will. Better. Worth more than the chisel. I'll let that one dry naturally. Last thing we have to do is, uh, is tape it. What are we up to on the bidding? Uh, Jim is still winning with 550. Super Dave's wife, uh, Michelle, is wondering where his bid is. <laughs> David, crack open that wallet. Super. Super's coming up sometime this summer. We haven't even told him yet. We'll, yeah, we'll yeah. do. Huh? You did? August. August? Yeah. I wanted to show me how to cut myself on the saw stuff. He's Wonder probably hoping Paul's to clean it. Paul's warning people? Yeah. To be careful. Dave's suing. He's suing? Yeah. He said there was no warning on the, on the paper manual. Just while we're waiting there, uh, I'd like to remind everyone that if you have not subscribed to Rob Cosman's YouTube channel, to please do so. We're really desperately trying to get to 100,000 subscribers. Oh, right. We want that plaque, that first plaque. Frick wants that plaque. Well, I do, yeah. yeah. I've never seen one in person, so... So, and I only have nice and, and when you do subscribe, make sure you push the notification thing. Yeah, the yeah. little bell. So you have. It. Yeah. We did. We just posted one just just yesterday on the comparison between the. Uh, you know, we should sell that right now. Yeah. It's out there on the table. So I, I'm not a fan of the low angle jack. I wasn't a fan when I sold Lee Nelson. I'm not a fan now that I sell um, Wood River. This just this is brand new out of the box. How much? What's the retail on it? Two. It's two. It's same as the five and a half. It's like two seventeen or something. Two eighteen. Maybe no. I think it might be two twenty five. Two twenty five. So if you want that, I'll even sell that one into the U.S. Um, you can have it for two hundred. Yeah. For two hundred. It's brand new. We still have the box. We got everything. We took it out of the box for pictures. No, it's to do that video. Oh, just to do the video. Sure. I just don't like I just don't like a low angle jack. I'm not a. It, here's I'll tell you. Well, watch the video. Okay, now we can tape this. So here's how I do it. Start right here. I start at the top. Stretch that down. And how much do you need? Probably 14, 15 inches. Spin that, and it'll turn it into a cord. And then wrap the cord at about intervals that your fingers would appreciate. And then the first wrap comes right at the top of the cone. Pull on it tight. Yeah, yeah. No, no, and no, then nothing. cover the cord, holding it in place. You can always change it if it gets ratty on you. And then down here, you want to come right up and cover all of the handle. And then rip that off. And then I give it a little twist like that. And there you go. That is a gorgeous Purple Heart Mallet. What are you going to bid, Frick? Uh, 575 No, I said, what are you going to bid? Yeah, that's my bid. Oh, sorry, Philip just beat me. 580 Sorry. <laughs> All I had was 575 So, So the current... That, uh, so it'll, it'll have Rob... Actually, we'll, we'll sign this one, maybe with the hot pen. Saying it's a special one. Now, um, I'm going to offer two more for sale if anybody wants. Actually, I got a few more. Now, just bear with me one second. Oh, no. He's disappeared. Megan and I will sing if you want. What?
George Barber is uh, the uh, manager of the uh, Woodcraft store down in Knoxville, Tennessee, and George is a, uh, that store is a huge supporter of our Purple Heart project. And George had made these two Purple Heart mallets for me to give to vets, but I can't give two when I have a whole bunch of them. So we, I didn't ask him, but I'm sure he's okay with it. If you guys would like to bid on these, these two will uh, will go into our Purple Heart. All, all the proceeds are going to our Purple Heart project. And remember, we're now going to increase the number of vets that we bring in each year from 28 to 36. So yes, we need more money. <laughs> so there's there's two more. George wants, and I've got enough Purple Heart to make two more of these. So if you didn't get one, and you want one, um, how do, can we can't do that, can we? Can't do that. I'm trying to figure out how to, the polite way of doing that. Super Dave says he can't bid because you didn't well, whatever, make a left hand. Whatever the highest bid goes, we sell the other two same price. Well, you're you're uh, you're uh, generous. Well, they can just e how about they Fun just to spend other people's money? <laughs> they can just email you if they if yeah. they want. If you want if you want either of these, email me. If you want one of, if you want me to make you one of the others, email me and we'll negotiate a price. But uh, the standard has been set. Who who's this? Paul said you can just do the top three there. Yeah, but I want the third. Yeah. How do you do that? Well, if you if you lose the primary bid, you don't necessarily, you're not necessarily obligated to take one of the other. It's if that's like well, we'll I know what we'll do. When we finally sell it, we'll take the top, we'll take the top, the number two and the number three, and I'll contact them by email and say, look, would you want one? And if you want, I'll make you one for that. George, look, George this is, is all. You, this is all going. If you only knew what this was going to do, this money. And uh, some of the guys that have been the class will tell you that there can no, no price can be put on, on the feeling you get when you help these guys. Uh, I think is that hot enough? George is here with us. And uh, hi, George. Did he give the okay? Yeah, he said I made them to support the project. So oh, thank you, George. Perfect. That's not hot enough. It's got to be really hot for this. But that will have the that will have the Rob Cosmo you're, logo. No, you're, on there. You're yeah, but uh, we'll do the logo and then we'll also sign it. Okay, we wrapping up. Uh, we just had a $600 bid from Ronnie Chauncey. Thanks, Ronnie. There's a bit of a delay here, so we have to uh, we have to kind of forewarn you. Um, any final questions? Give him a minute. Six ten from Philip. Six ten. We're gonna have to stay on if the bidding keeps going. Does everybody get the t-shirts that they want? Is is uh, is um, Andy? Is Angie still on? Lynn will tell us if she is. I haven't seen them. To yeah, be I honest. haven't seen them. But uh, Robert from Newark just bought a T-shirt. Thank you, Robert. You should ask if it's time for a new color. Not yet. We have to sell more T-shirts eventually, so we'll have to come up with a new color. And we'll take suggestions too. What, what whatever looks good on that uh, against that black. It's George's birthday tomorrow, by the way. George Barber. I think so. 40, 47 would be my guess. No, I'm wrong. Happy birthday, George, to you. Any questions? Any questions? Any questions? What was the name of the clear coat you sprayed on the mallet? Deft. I'll get Jake to put, a, put it up there. Fantastic product. I wish I could get it in Canada. I can't. Deft, clear finish. This is the semi-gloss. I don't like the gloss. The best part of it is... It dries unbelievably fast. <clears throat> it, the spray nozzle is fantastic. It just lays this beautiful uh, mist on there. And what's really nice if you're doing small projects is it comes out with such low force, it doesn't knock the product over. I try to do that with my HVLP and it, it will push a, knock a small box over. The downside is it doesn't have very much when it comes to moisture resistance. But uh, you know. Quickly, I know, you described, I know you said this at the beginning of the episode, but uh, Thane... Curtis is asking why a round mallet head instead of a square. You know, well, if you use a, a hammer type mallet. Grab your, grab your rubber mallet. That would be closer to. Oh, yeah. If you use a, uh, uh, and I got a meds right there in the background. So it's too pretty to use. 
you you ha it has to be directional. If you happen to hit on the edge and you glance off, you're not going to get the accuracy you're looking for. I find that this is just I don't know. I find it so much that's easier a, to use. A oh shoot! Oh hey, that stuff's really hard. Doesn't even leave a dent. I meant to use mine. A couple recommendations for t-shirt colors: maple leaf red and pink. Uh, <laughs> no, no. Uh, Nagada on the pink, but I like the ma I like the uh, the maple leaf red, but with the purple, the would that get lost? Suit it to the ladies. Come on, really? Oh, bit of six twenty from Ronnie. Thanks, Ronnie. Okay, I'm starving, and Jake and I still have to film the last ten minutes of tonight's episode, so we got to wind this down. Um, final thoughts. Ne next, uh, do we have a date on our next? No. We don't oh july 6th that's coming right up that's next saturday we're going to have our first ever one day dovetail workshop right here in the right here in our new teaching shop it's going to run from nine in the morning until six in the evening the, here's the best part and i've taught this class all over canada united states and the uk never have i shown up and everybody had all of my tools now why do i say that if you've, ta if you've taken a class from me, you know how important the tools are to getting perfect results. I can brag about some of these behind me. I'm providing all of the tools. You don't have to show up with anything. So come. The tools will all be provided. Lunch will be provided. Frick's going to have a barbecue that will be awesome. Not the highlight of the day, but close. And there's 12 spots. We've sold half of them or more. We have a combat wounded vet from Maine. He just applied for our uh, scholarship program for October. Really good guy. Great. And I thought, uh, when I saw he's from Maine, he's only three hours away, I said, shoot, I should, I'm going to invite him up to the, to the uh, one-day workshop. So he's going to come in as our guest. So you know, if you're there, you'll have a chance to meet him, and uh, he'll get a taste of what we do here in the week. So don't forget, that's July 6th, which is next Saturday. And probably the following weekend, we'll do our next episode, and we'll come up with a topic for then all right we're wrapping it up yep so uh we're gonna end it then philip lawrence is the winner with 630 dollars thank you philip 630 dollars it's yours brother i will sign it we'll put our logo on it and the uh, other two the other top two we will contact you if you want i'll make the make one just like that for you and uh, if anybody's interested in the purple heart ones that george made to support our program please let us know on that and we will get them in the mail to you so uh, just a note from Jake here, um, Philip, if you can go ahead on the website and just donate that amount through the donation on there, and then we'll get everything sorted out. Wait, what, what was that? <clears throat> I was just telling. Oh, uh, Philip. Oh, Philip you mean just a, to go on the, the website, payment. do the don. How's he going to do a six hundred and thirty dollar donation? It's I suppose he can do a five hundred and a hundred and a twenty and a ten. There you go. So, or do you just want to invoice him? Three tens. No, th yeah, he can do that. Okay. And leave your address so I can send it to you. A little extra. And, and email us your address, too, mm -hmm. so we can send it to you. Thank you, everybody. Okay, how many do we have on tonight at the peak? Around 440. Good. That, that was a good night. Yeah. Really Thanks, good. guys. Appreciate it. Please find us a combat wounded vet, whether it's a mental wound or a physical wound. It does not matter. But it must be combat related. We had to have parameters for our program, and that's what they are. Encourage them to contact us through our email. Uh, th uh, the uh, registration process is on the website. Just fill it out. I'll just give them this little bit of warning. You have to write your story, and you have to give it to us in detail. We're not looking for, we're not trying to be nosy, but this is triage. We're trying to determine who needs this the most. I would suggest you write at least a half a page. Do it as if you're talking to your therapist. You're not going to exaggerate, but you're not going to hold back. And uh, if you don't get selected, Apply again. We don't save the old ones, but we open this up to anybody's walk. Anybody that fits those got criteria can apply as many times as they want. Okay. Have a happy Fourth of July. Happy Happy Canada Day if you're Canadian, and we will see you guys in a couple of weeks. Thank you for Thank you for your participation, and thank you to Jake, and Frick, and Megan, and and Angie, and Super Dave. Yeah, barely. Yeah. <laughs> See you, Dave. And Paul. And Paul. Yes, thank you, for Paul. For harassing Dave. Pardon? For harassing Dave. Yes, for harassing Dave.
Thank you, Paul, for harassing Dave, keeping him in check. See you guys. Have a good weekend.